Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome to the People's Health Alliance Wellbeing Wednesday session on Wednesday, the 24th of January 2024. I hope that you're all putting 24 instead of 20 and things like that. Uh, we have reached a new year and we're well nearly the end of January. So today we're going to uh, do what we do best, which is to just uh, share, talk and hopefully engage you all. Welcome to everybody that's here. And if you're watching this on Catch Up, please do make a comment, like, subscribe and all the jazz because apparently this all makes it. So I would like to start today's session off uh, and invite you all into a meditation. Um, I do, before we go into the meditate, no, we'll do the meditation. So I invite you all now to close your eyes, soften your gaze, get comfortable wherever you are, preferably seated. Uh, you can lie down, of course, uh, you can stand, uh, but be very aware of your ground. Do not do this if you're driving. Okay, so no closing of the eyes, sure that you are safe. And just just take three deep, full breaths, inhaling through the nose and out through the mouth. My, if my internet should uh, play up, which it has a propensity to do, just remain with your breath. So take three deep, full breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then normalise your breathing, however that is for you and however it's comfortable. Become aware of the seat beneath you, the support that you're being offered. And that connection of that seat or the bed to the earth, if you're not directly on the earth. Become aware of the feel of your environment. Is there a breeze? Is it warm, cool? Where all the places that your skin is touched by something, whether that be a breeze, the wind, your clothing, your glasses on your nose, your earrings in your ears, your rings, bracelets, necklaces, hats, whatever may come into contact with your skin. What you can feel. Come wherever the sounds of your environment and my environment. I have animals here which you may hear in the distance. Sounds outside your immediate environment. There are storms in some places. So you may hear the wind. You may hear your home shaking. What sounds are being offered to you? aware of any aroma, any scents that are coming into your nose as you breathe, the coolness of the, of the air as it enters into your body, and any alterations in temperature as it leaves, is there a smell, is there an odour, an aroma, a scent? Come aware of any taste Breathing through your mouth, this might be more amplified. Is there a taste? Can you taste anything? Just bringing your awareness to what your senses offer. Also, your intuitive, your third eye, your sixth sense. Allowing your thoughts to pass and flow like water in a stream, clouds in the sky. Any recurring thoughts, acknowledge them, allow. Notice what's going on in your body, your beautiful, wonderful, glorious body. Is there any tightness, any stiffness? 
Is there a sense of space? From the tip of your toes to the top of your head, your feet, your shins, your calves, your knees, your thighs, your pelvis, your lower abdomen, your mid-back, your upper back, your midriff, your chest, your shoulders, your arms, your hands, your neck. Take a moment to tune into your body, say thank you, and say, is there any part of my body that wishes to communicate with me? And allow. Don't search, don't force. Gentle, curious inquiry. Asking your mind with all of those thoughts, is there, is there something I need to know? Is there something I need to do? And take a moment to just allow your mind. To present and accept. Whatever it may be, nothing at all or something. Allowing yourself a moment to ask your spirit, your soul. They may be different to you, they may be one in the same. Is there anything I need to know, to do, to receive? Just allow that to flow, whether it be a bodily sensation, a vision, something that you hear, a change in smell, Changing how you feel. Breathing and allowing. Taking a moment to thank your mind, to thank your body, to thank your soul, your spirit. And to invite the three to work together in harmony. All aspects of self. Together in harmony as one. Colour of your choice. Cleansing. Harmonising. Loving. See yourself enveloped in this beautiful shimmering light. Allow it to pass through you, around you, offering you its love, its healing, its nurturing, its nourishing qualities. Bringing together mind, body and soul. And where do they meet within yourself? In your heart, in your gut, in your big toe, in your fingers. Allow them to connect, to be one within. Enveloped in this beautiful shimmering light. That passes and swells through and around you. Caressing you, loving you, protecting you if necessary. Harmonising all that you are. All that you have been and all that you will be in this moment, here, now. Now allow yourself to shine a light in any dark places that you may perceive within yourself, your mind, your body or your soul. Allow a light, a gentle light to illuminate. Allow that light to caress, to nourish and nurture. 
embracing all those aspects of self. The shadow, the ego, your fears, your worries, your concerns, sharing them in shimmering loving light that nurtures them. Allowing yourself to receive any messages there may, there may not be. Just allow. You are whole, you are one. You are safe. You have lived through every moment of your life thus far and you are here. Allow any concerns and worries to be evaporated within the light. Becoming aware of the sea beneath you. Supporting you, ultimately supported by the earth. See those roots going down in, into the, the earth, connecting you to the earth. Feel that divine energy of the earth entering into your body, nourishing and nurturing, connecting to the divine light of the universe above, knowing the manifestation of both within you, here, now. Once more, becoming aware of the earth, the sea beneath you, how that feels. Becoming aware of the feel of your environment, the sound of your environment, the taste, the texture. Knowing that you are whole, you are loved, you are loving. Preparing yourself for your day ahead or sleep, depending on when you are listening. Knowing that you have all you need within you. You are. And say in your mind or out loud, I am. I am all. I am one with me. I am one with all. Take three deep, full breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Each breath bringing you more fully aware of this moment, this time, this place. And in your own time, open your eyes fully rejuvenated and ready for your day filled with love and gratitude. Welcome back. So much gratitude I'm going for to, you. I'm everybody is back. Thank you. <laughs> very, very welcome. And I'm going to pass you over now to the beautiful June Chamra, who is going to share and illuminate with her wisdom and love. Thank you, June. Well, this is a little bit secondhand wisdom because I went to a lovely webinar last night by my brilliant teacher and friend and mentor, Nick Haynes, Nicholas Haynes. And um, talking about the year of the dragon and and 
tiny zodiac and things. So I've just got a few snippets that I wanted to share. And if people want to investigate his work more, I would heartily recommend it. Um, he's got a free vitality test on his website, The Five Institute, where you can check your predominant elements because often you have a primary and a secondary one out of the five. So um, he's talking about the interesting thing about the dragon. Well, there's so many interesting things about the year of the dragon. I, It's coming up on February 10th. That's the beginning of it. But you can sort of start to feel it beginning now. Things are getting a bit whooshy out there. All these wind and, and everything. Dragons are not of this world, though. They're not like the other animals. All the other animals are very grounded and earth-based, but dragons are not. They're mythical creatures and they bring messages. So um, yeah, messages, listen out for messages. And just ground yourself as well, of course, while this is all going on. He, he talked about the many things that we can face this year with and he thought that really what we needed i'm looking at my notes here sorry. um it's all about confidence being confident and ambitious and powerful like a dragon and asking yourself what it is you need the confidence to do next what it is you are meant to do next because we're all here with a purpose and I love this part, Helen. He said, are you being authentically you? And I thought, we try. <laughs> Helen, more than most. <laughs> That's in her name. It's that authentically you is, is just what we need to we need to be. We can't be anybody else. Um, and being idealistic, visionary, and congruent with who we are. So we can have visions that may sound attractive because somebody else's idea, but really being true to yourself. You don't have to have a plan, but just be clear on what you want. And this is the very best year to manifest things because of this. Look out for and permit possibilities and allow two things to exist at the same time. So he he's he's so eloquent. I was trying to write this down while he was busy talking. He did, he did a wonderful job. <clears throat> so we need to step into our earth element to make sure our dreams are sustainable. So we don't just have, you know, off in flights of fancy. We need to stay grounded. We need to stay connected to the earth. And planting seeds. This is the time to plant the seeds of our dreams. And some of them might take a while to come to fruition, but this is a time to renew, revise, and relaunch. If we've had um, previous plans that we'd like to bring back, we need to think about them in a, maybe a different way. And, you know, core confidence is the key thing. And the, the, uh, yes, the important thing that he said that resonated with me um, connected to our uh, Oracle Cards event that we did on Sunday, beating up an earlier version of ourselves can collapse our core confidence. So make sure that you forgive yourself. Make sure that you keep your core confidence and then you will have more confidence in situations because situations can knock our confidence and make us wobble. But one of the most important things, and this fits with what Pam Gregory is talking about, about the meditation on Sunday evenings at seven o'clock surrounding the world with love and light. She's not organizing it. She's just encouraging it. And people all around the world are doing it, you know, holding hands in our minds and, and, and connecting with each other and giving each other love and light, but also surrounding areas in the world that need that love and light. He said the square root of 1% of the population can actually change the world. 
it's been it's been calculated by people who know better about numbers than I do. So yeah, we can have a magnificent effect. We can collectively manifest if we just put our minds to it. So I thought that was really rather lovely. And then I have the um are we going to we shall I just move on to the to the um the full moon thing because it kind of fits. Yeah. I've got the lovely Claire Otwell and um share sound. <laughs> Make sure I press the right things. There we go. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Oily Witch update on the full moon that is coming to us on Thursday. So we have a full moon coming in Leo. This is a full birch moon. So lots of energy around clearing, a lot of energy around courage, love. We've got to look at kind of Leo is the ruled by the sun. So there's fire in the moon. So that gives us courage, inner courage, to work out what needs to be purged from our lives, so new beginnings. So apart from that, I'm going to kind of give you an update about Pluto and Aquarius, and I'm just going to set the stage for that, and then I'm going to roll on from there. I've made some notes so I can stay on top of what I want to say, because for some reason today, possibly planetary-wise, I just can't seem to kind of flow as well as I like. So Pluto went into Aquarius on Sunday. Yeah. Was it Sunday? Yeah, it was Sunday. Um, or was it Saturday? No, it was Saturday. Oh, anyway, Pluto went into Aquarius, winning already. And it will stay there. Like everyone, oh, it's a big, a big event. It is a big event, um, but it's a big event in terms of what it means in your particular chart. And that's where you really need to pay attention because we get all this kind of universal advice, but we need to work out what it means to us as individuals. Now, Pluto takes around 240 years to work its way through the 12 zodiac signs, spending roughly about 20 years in each sign. So it's going to stay there until 2040 three or four, 2043, I think. But there is a little bit of a slip back in September this year, which lasts to November as it goes a little bit retrograde back into Capricorn. Now, Pluto is the ruler of karma, lessons, transformation. Pluto means wealth. He was god of the underworld. The reason being was under the ground is where all the minerals and all the wealth is. So there's kind of like that element to this. So Pluto rules money, sexuality, but also shadow side. As we know, with everything, it has the light and it has the dark. Then we have Capricorn, which is where Pluto has been, which is father, system, governance and work. That's what Capricorn represents routines kind of you know it's kind of a very structured planet and then we have Aquarius which is where it's gone which is all about community humanitarian principles you kind of originality open-mindedness but the negative side of Aquarius is guarded detached destructive irrational and desperate so there's kind of you know this Pluto's gone into Aquarius so how's it going to work out you know for you particularly now, this theme that these guys have created, and by these guys, I mean <laughs> the Sun and Pluto, this theme, because they're both in Aquarius together, and that happened yesterday, is all about power and powerlessness, self-assertion, profound transformation. So when we look back, we have the start of the kind of Pluto sun journey was in December 2020, or this kind of round. And that's when the collective upheaval really kicked off. And this kind of energy is coming back now. It's being activated again, but this is a turning point. But decisions that are made now have long term consequences in our lives together. And we have to think about the kind of technological side of Aquarius because it has this very kind of, you know, AI kind of magical kind of ability to jump forward so quantum leaps and development over that thing and I know certainly in my circles we're having lots of chats about chat GPT and how good it is and there's a lot of fear around it and understandably there should be caution around it but if you use these tools 
with the best intentions in the right way, you can capitalize on that. And we can't move backwards. We're not going back into dark ages. We're going forward and we don't want to chuck the baby out with the bathwater, which is what kind of seems to be the expectation. We're saying we're birthing this new world. We are, but it's not going to be like this overall kind of rebirth that takes place where everything crumbles at once. It is quite kind of, you know, massive and gradual because it's such a huge, enormous change. So other things like, so let's go back to the moon because that's super exciting. So as I said, this is real courage to clear and embrace our personal fashions, passions even, and fashions. It's about putting the self first. Leo is good at that, self, um, sun, self, um, coming from that kind of energy. So what do we desire in our lives and what do we want to let go of? Because we have to let go in order to create the space for what we want instead but this one is all about practicing moderation, self-control and humility. So not going crazy and just being like, ah! and it might be because of the Saturn Jupiter kind of thing going on in the background, which is basically quite big, that there's a provocation aspect to this. So it might be you annoying other people or them ignoring you, but there is also energy to achieve a enormous goal, significant personal goal here. This kind of, you know, over the last couple of weeks, there might have kind of been this kind of around relationships, intimate relationships, family kind of uh, irritations around that. They've come into sharper focus um, with possibly you feeling kind of like pulled between work versus home, what you need, what you actually want. You know, you know, we can want things, but they're not good for us. And that can create kind of an energy conflict draining vibe whereas this full moon pulls it all together and gives us the strength and intuition to overcome these relationship challenges providing we act with moderation self-control and humility and the subconscious is in fact allowing us for an honest balanced look at those relationships so it's going to be really obvious who doesn't serve you and what you need to get go of. let get go of get gone and let go of uh jupiter squares um is testing our faith saturn straining our emotions but their sextile is what gives us the patience to do what we need to do so i hope that's helpful i'm sure it will be please look at your eyes <laughs> i think she said it ties in with what you were saying it it does it's so interesting the way western so astrology and chinese ties in with what your drag in your your the, the uh, Nick. yeah yeah and the the interesting thing that i i didn't mention about what nick said was that we are at equivalent time of 1964 because that's the last time we had the wooden dragon and there was a lot of movement towards peace and love and harmony and all that kind of stuff similar to what's happening now although it got a bit sabotaged so we're not going to let that happen this time, are we? <laughs> so um, it does the, the Chinese cycle is every 60 years. Is that right? Yeah, yeah because, oh, it, you know what? I did get a, a picture up um, of the zodiac. Each, there's there's five elements, as I do keep going on about. Fire, earth, water, metal, and wood. Not in that order, particularly. <laughs> Um, and then there's 12 animals, so that makes 60. So each each animal comes round in each element every every 60 years. So we started out, 2020 was two metal years, which all is all to do with isolation and grief and loss and nee, 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 all that stuff that is to do with metal. And we had the two metal animals at the beginning of that that um era and we're still we're still kind of that's the overriding um thing because there's different cycles uh different levels um so we had who did we have the rat and the ox that's right and then at the end of this block of time 2031 we've got the dog and the pig also in metal but in the meantime we had the water tiger the water rabbit and and now we've got the wood dragon and we're going to have a wood snake next and then we're moving into horse and on it goes each each year different animal I find all of these systems absolutely mind-blowing to be fair you know whether it's astro astrology chinese systems they all kind of just wow 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It connects us to the to the wider galaxy and and that is quite whew, <laughs> it's big. <laughs> it's a lot of it. A lot of space out there. It's so small when we look at uh, when when we you know and you're like we're actually not that big and you know we're, and yet we're huge as well it's massive it's, 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 am i breaking up yeah <laughs> yeah ever so slightly <laughs> should we have some grounding movement from kerry yes i think I so think enough of this out there stuff let's come down to earth <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, June. Thank you for your thank you. Uh, and we're gonna uh, now get Kerry's gonna move us, which means I'm going to be in pain tomorrow because I'm usually in pain on a Thursday and Friday these days. <laughs> My legs usually <laughs> feed. So thank you, Kerry. <laughs> You're very welcome. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Down to earth with the bump, or should we say bum? Because today we're gonna focus on the glutes. I'm just going to put a little link in the in the chat because that's where I stole the image from. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen just for the sake of the recording so people can talk and um, understand what I'm talking about. Unlike myself. <laughs> Let's click on the right thing. Hopefully you can see this now. Can everyone see that? So just for those that don't know, when we talk about the glutes, there's three main ones. Your glute max, which is the huge one there, you can see on your screen, that's the one that sticks out. That's the one everybody wants to be rounded and peachy, apparently. <laughs> but we all come in different shapes and sizes, so it doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it works for you. And then you've got the medius and the minimus, which sits right underneath. So enough of that sciencey thing. Let's just get some movement going. Why do we need strong glutes? Well, we need to have good posture. We need to be able to balance. We've talked about balance a lot. Um, we need to be strong in our movement. And also if our glutes aren't strong, then other muscles and joints will take over and then we might have injury. If anyone has lower back pain, I have lower back pain. And that's usually because my glutes are too tight and overworked. So I need to loosen them off <laughs> because I do too much. But that's another story. Um, so also the other thing to, re to remind ourselves is to make sure each side is balanced. June, the lovely June will tell you about balance of muscles, because obviously if one side is not switched on, as they say, then the other side might compensate. And that's where you can find injuries and maybe walk a little bit lopsided, maybe. But enough of the talk. If you are not used to exercise, then please make sure you're, um, you've are you seeked health advice beforehand from a practitioner. If you're used to it, then let's go. Please listen to your body. Any pain, stop. We're going to do quite a few lunges and squats to work the glutes. So just be careful. If you have any knee pain, stop. The range of movement is important. The lower you go, the more you'll be working your glutes, but you will... Um, you will be bending at the knees. So try and uh, listen to your body and let's go. Let's warm up to start. Can you see my feet <laughs> when I go backwards? <laughs> Sorry, can you see? Okay, great. Let's just get warmed up. So we start with our side steps. Just tap in the floor. Make sure your body's nice and relaxed. Let the arms just sway side to side. Lift the shoulders and release. Take the shoulders back a couple of times, just to warm up and then forwards. Excellent. When you're ready, you're going to take one foot behind the other. Allow the arms just to swing across the body. Feel a nice little rotation in the hips. If you've joined us before, you'll know we do the same warm up. So you'll be nice and familiar. 
When you're ready, take that foot across the front. Beautiful. You'll start to feel this in the lower back, down the sides. Let's do four more times. And then we're gonna reach across the body. So just reach across, lift in the heel of the foot. You don't twist at the knee. Keep the arms low if you need to. And then we take them higher, if you can. So you're warming up gently, but you're also stretching. We we'll talk about stretches another day. Let's do two more. Then we're going to start lifting the, the knee. So you can keep it quite low if you need to. We talked about hip flexors last week. We need to get them all warmed up, especially for squatting. They need to be strong. So they allow the glutes to do their work. If you want to, take the arms higher, up and over. Beautiful. Some lovely high knees, I can see. Well done. Let's do six more. And then we're gonna warm up the backs of the legs, and lift in the heels. You can keep it low or lift the knee, the, lift the knee, <laughs> lift the foot towards the buttocks. Well done. If you need to take this down at any time, just bring the range of movement in. Three more times. And then we're gonna start with our squats. So feet facing forward, your bum is going back, the pressure is going away from the knees. So you're trying to sit down. If you need to, you can hold on to something. You can also have a chair behind you. If you're sat down, push the feet into the floor, squeeze the bottom and have the intention of standing, even if you can't do a full squat. Going to do three more. Carry on with this if you want to, otherwise you're going to swing your arms down towards the floor and come up tall, nice big stretch. So with our warm up, we are using all the glutes, get them nice and warm and ready for further movement. Take the arms wide if you want to, stretch and push through the chest. Let's do this three more times. You might find this is enough for you. This will raise your heart rate. Get that blood pumping around the body. All the oxygen to the cells. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Take the feet wide. Toes are turned out this time. As you bend, sorry, as you squat down, your knees will follow the direction of the toes. Try not to let them come in. Doesn't matter how low you go, you're trying to get a a nice stretch here. If there's a problem with your knees, just come back to the forward squat. As long as you go, so as long as you are looking forward, your chest is up, your back will be straight, doesn't, you don't have to be vertically completely straight, as long as you're not forwards. A bit tongue tied this morning. <laughs> I was going to get enough sleep. Okay, when we're ready, we're going to go into a curtsy squat. This can be a little bit demanding on the knees. Again, if it's too uncomfortable, just stay with forward squats. Otherwise, as low as is comfortable for you. If you take the leg further away, you'll be working outside of the of the leg more. If you're keeping it narrow, you'll feel it at the front. So just try a couple long, further away from the body, and then bring it in, see how that feels. I think we're already warmed up. So a couple of those things, just keep moving. A couple of those things we're going to repeat. We're going to start 
with 10 squats. So get yourself comfortable when you're ready, as low as you feel comfortable. And let's go with 10 squats. Really feel the glutes working, so squeeze the bottom. Try and take all the pressure off the front of the thighs, all those big quad muscles, and use your bottom. Can you feel both sides working the same? Can you feel one more than the other? If you want to make this harder, we won't today, but if you want to, you can add a jump. So this is, increases the power, uses those big muscles a little bit more. Let's try some more sumo. So feet turning out wide. Let's go for 10. Watch those knees. Looking good. My hands will automatically come together. I think it's crown position. <laughs> I was thinking Robin. My little tribute to Robin. Is the weight on the outside of your feet? Make sure they don't roll in. And relax. Give your legs a shake. How's your bottom feeling? We're going to go straight into a side lunge. Years and years ago, we used to turn the foot and make this big lunge. Hurt, to, you know, all problems with our knees. Now, when you step to the side, make sure your foot is facing forward. And you're basically doing half a squat. So you're getting one side activated. Can you feel that? So we're just going to go one side, then we're going to bring the leg in. Out, look at the foot, lunge down. If it's more comfortable, just stay with both feet facing forward. Side lunge and come up. Now, although I teach these, <laughs> I do quite a lot of squats and my range isn't great because I'm too tight. You might be going right the way down to the floor. So just listen to your body. No pain <laughs> at all. Pain is not gain. We're going to change the sides. So take a big step out. If you want to bring the leg in and out, this will raise your heart rate, so it makes you work a little bit harder. Just stay here if you want to. Really try and get that bottom to the heel. Can we do four more? The great thing about these type of workouts at home, they really do work. They get your heart rate up. You work in your muscle groups and you don't need any equipment, and it's free. Give your legs a shake. <laughs> Remember the warm up, curtsy lunges. Now we can go lower if you want to, and touch the floor. But don't touch the floor if it causes you to bend over. You can only touch the floor if you can crouch. When we do these exercises, we're looking after the whole body. So no back problems, no back ache. Well done. Thanks for joining in with me, everybody. You're looking good. Let's do five more if we can. Last one. Well done. We've got two more exercises to do. We're going to do reverse lunge this time. <laughs> See you do that. <laughs> we talked about reverse lunges last week. So if you need to hold on to something, that's fine. Take a big step back. Both feet are facing forward. Your shoulders are back, away from your ears. Your chest is forward. You're going to look straight ahead and then just bend the knees. Just start small. And then if you can, all the way down and all the way up. So we're going to do this 10 times. Make sure that front knee is not going over the toes. 
Once you're in position, try and ignore this front leg. And just get the back knee to the floor or as close to as you can. You feel this all the way down yeah. your leg. Your front leg is the one that's working the glutes. As you're pushing up from the floor with that front leg, that front foot pushing up, that's where you'll feel the glutes working. Well done. I like to shake off after even each move because you've contracted those muscles. They've worked really hard. When you're ready, take the other leg behind, chest back. Sorry, shoulders back, chest forward, look ahead. It's okay to hold on. If you need the extra stability, look straight ahead. Looking good, everyone. We do three more. Excellent, well done. Shaking the legs. So we talked about balance. We've done lots of balance exercises. They're so important for us. <laughs> Watch me fall over now. <laughs> when we're ready, we're gonna go into a single leg, leg a deadlift if you want to hold on. You can either lift the foot and then extend behind you, or you can go from a straight leg position and just raise. So you're again working the supporting leg. So this is the butt that you're working. If you want to put your hands there, you can actually feel the different glute muscles working. And then if you can do it without holding on, you'll get that balance element as well. Can we do four more this side? Well done. Okay, last side, if we can. That lovely stretch. It doesn't matter how high you go, just try and keep your head in line with your foot that's lifted so you're not in any bad postural positions. Excellent. Can we do four more? Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to go on the, oh, nice one. Well done, Jamal. Mark. That was a nice big lift there. Look great. We're going to be on the floor now. We're going to do what we did last week, which is our glute bridge lift. And then we can do some stretches. Hopefully you can see and hear me. So coming onto the floor, your knees be bent. Just roll gently back. If you need to hold on to your legs, that's fine. Roll nice and slowly down. Tuck the shoulders underneath. Relax the arms, have the palms facing up. Your feet are hip width apart. You're going to squeeze your glutes and you're just going to lift the bottom off the floor. Go as high as you feel is comfortable. Squeeze, hold, and then slowly back down. If you can, your bottom won't just plonk. So if you can, just skim and then come back up. We're only going to do this another eight times. So slowly, not quite at the floor, up. If this hurts your knees, then keep the range lower, just off the floor. Pushing right up here and put the, more weight through the knees, so avoid that. If you're comfortable with this and you want to make it harder, you could take one leg in the air and then as you go down, the knee will bend and then you can push right up. 
So you can do single leg lifts. And this is even better because you're targeting one side of the body and then the other. So if you're doing single, just change your legs down. We can do five more. And relax. Well done. If you're in this position and you can, just bring the knees into the chest. And take a big breath in. And then out. We're going to come up to standing, but really, really slowly. So lower the feet to the floor. And then if you want to, you can roll onto one side. Just hold it there for a couple of seconds. And then you can push yourself up to sitting. However you normally get up, <laughs> just take it nice and steady. Head comes up last. Sometimes it's nice to go onto all fours, tuck the toes under and then just sit back on the heels and then you can stretch the calf muscles and the Achilles at the same time. If you can't bend, just come up, tuck the head under, slowly roll up through the shoulders. Just keep your feet narrow. Rotate the shoulders back, put your hands on the hips or the thighs and stick your bottom back. So the idea is you're getting your bottom up and back. So you feel that stretch in the back of the thighs and the glutes. If you only come to here, that's fine. Just try and keep a straight back. You can push back on the thighs, take the elbows behind you and push the chest forward. That increases the stretch. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's just hold that for three, two, and then bring the toes up of one foot. You really feel the calf muscle stretch, but we'll continue stretching down the back of the thigh. If you want to increase it, just to bend that supporting knee a little bit more. And then you, oh, you feel that stretch. If it's too much, just ease off. As I said at the beginning, always listen to your body. Relax, lower that toes of that foot and then change. We're learning through Wellbeing Wednesday to listen to our mind <laughs> and our emotions, but also listen to your physical body too. Well done. Just lower the foot. Roll up nice and slowly. You have an option here. You can either take one foot behind the other and reach over, or you can take that foot with a little bit of help for balance on the opposite knee and then just sit down. I can't balance and look at what I'm doing. <laughs> well done Helen, just balancing as well, fantastic. Can you feel that in your glutes? Nice big stretch. You can do this sitting as well. When you're ready, ease off, stand up. Either change side, so if it's your left foot behind, your left arm goes up, right arm goes down or swing it round gently without falling over and sit back. I think I've just done the same leg. <laughs> well done. Three, two, come up, relax, give the legs a shake. Relax into a wide stance and then we're just going to take the arms in a big circle one way and the other. Well done. Fantastic. Thank you for joining me. Happy Wellbeing Wednesday, everybody. Thank you, Kerry. I am uh, out of breath. <laughs> and I know that tomorrow I will not, won't be walking and I'll go, what is that hurt? What is that feeling? Is it what? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's what happens every Thursday and Friday. <laughs> and I'm doing something and I'm like, why? Oh, yes. Well, that's <laughs> so, quite tough. <laughs> uh, it is. Good, good, so, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jean. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you. Um, I am out of breath, but uh, anyway... Would anyone like to uh, make a contribution? Would anybody like to uh, make any comments? If you don't wish to be seen on camera, you can leave your camera on.
off and just turn on your mic or if you don't mind you can turn both on but is there anybody that would like to uh, say anything about what we've spoken about today the chinese year of the wood dragon um the exercises that we've done the full moon that's coming up on thursday um honoring the self and the body and the mind <sighs> exhausted helen is muchly so <laughs> Um, I went. Um, I was going to mention um, shadow. Uh, I did. Um, I do a, 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 a my daughter. Said, it's not a radio show. It's a podcast. So anyway, there you go. Uh, on Holistic Radio UK, on a Monday, and I had uh, Antonella from the White Peacock talking about shadow work. Um, so I just thought I'd mention shadow. You kind of brought it in a little bit in the meditation in terms of illuminating and shining. Not shining, but allowing a light to uh, illuminate some of our darker areas and the things that we're not too keen upon. Um, and I just wondered if anybody just thought, I just thought I'd mentioned shadow and uh, pushing out that you embrace all of you. There is no part of you that is not right. There is no part of you that is not working in your favour. Whatever might be going on has um, uh, manifest for a reason it might be old defaults that kept you safe it might be um it might be that the world at the moment you're you're in a, a particular place so you're, you're at, where you're actually mo motivating yourself and moving yourself from um and your shadow plays a part in all of that as your ego and your other psychological aspects um but i just wanted to kind of just mention it and also to encourage you to embrace all of you. Uh, Kerry spoke about listening to the body, listening to your mind, listening to every aspect of yourself. If you do, some people don't believe that they there is a spirit and a soul, but you know, I'm not really, you know, I don't, I don't, that, that that's so far outside of my understanding that I, I find it difficult, but listen to all of you, mind, body and soul and, and honour yourself uh june spoke about the wood dragon and authenticity be your most glorious wonderful self because everyone else is taken no matter how much you want to be like somebody else you're still going to be you being like somebody else so you might as well be like you and and, and embrace you uh because why not give it a go see what happens and for those bits that you don't like about yourself um, if you need to connect with somebody to find out what it is about you that you're not too happy about, um, because really you are perfect. I truly believe that we are perfect because if we're not, please show me the perfect me that you are comparing me to that makes me imperfect. And there isn't one. There's only me and there's only you. And on that, I'm going to, uh, unless there's anyone in, I'm going to shut up now and just go silent for a minute because people might actually want to say something. <laughs> I found my zodiac picture. I just want to quickly share it so it gets onto the slideshow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Can I, don't I have anything to say? I just oh. want to show it. There we go. Oh, right. A picture's okay. worth a thousand words, right? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Jean Marc, you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, actually, um, I really uh, resonating with what you just said because that what's uh, what the challenge we're facing facing as a therapist uh, when we got uh, passion coming and uh, not happy with their body, what not happy with what uh, the way the body is um, is growing or the way the body is changing, now. And uh, my uh, reflection to that, and my answer to that most of the time, it, to the first question, it's uh, how, you, how you feel in yourself. Forget about your body for a minute, but how you feel in yourself. You feel good, you feel good, you feel good on yourself, or do you feel tired, do you feel sick, or this sort of thing. I say, if you feel good in yourself, why you want to change the, the the constitution of your body, where well, that is the body you are born with, and you cannot change it, because that's what it is. We are born with a constitution. In uh, in homeopathy, we got 
different, uh, what we call pilast, right? So some they are born, uh, they are nux vomica, some they are aquanit, some they are, you know, in, uh, in, in uh, uh, what you call the ayuridic, you got three dosa, you know, you cannot change somebody which is 100% vata into pita or kappa, right? Or vice versa. I know during the, the day we fluctuating between different dosa. Dosa is not really a quality, dosa is a problem, right? And uh, so how to address, we have to, most of the time, because we're fighting against ourselves, right? Because we want to be like this person is. <clears throat> Why that work with this person? It doesn't work with me, right? And when you look at the, the testimonial on some of the things people, the, the, and that way also internet where people losing themselves. Because they want to have the body, uh, they suppose for them, they're going to see, they're going to have, they will be able to achieve this figure according to what this person said uh, and uh, setting the program, right? So they always put the the positive testimonial, but they never put the testimonial of the people they're struggling and they cannot achieve that. Because that is more, that is the truth, right? You are talking about the metal element. For, for myself, for example, I discovered uh, through the Chinese uh, zodiac, I discovered I was 100% uh, metal. And I discovered I was 90%, uh, my body is 90% uh, feminine energy. Right? And when uh, when I discovered that, I understood what I went through during my, my uh, uh, life, right? and, and why I really struggled, and why I was struggling not to be the person who the metal want to be, they want to be a different person more more like uh, empathetic, more like loving, you know, because metal it is not like that. Metal is sharp, cutting, right? So it's very interesting to see uh, from uh, above all this year what you've been through and why you've been through, and you, you, you'll never be able to pinpoint it. But Zodiac uh, will, and it can be the challenge, it can be the the, the astrological, uh, what you call, Western view or something. They got the, all the answers are there. Yeah, I think that's the thing. It's about allowing people and offering people or encouraging people to take space to find out who they are, um, free from all of those societal kind of dictates. That's definitely... Where, where I would <laughs> be working from, you know, getting people to, you know, stop trying to be somebody else and who they, they, they're told they should be and tap into who they are and who they want to be. And on that note, thank you everybody for joining today's Wellbeing Wednesday. Um, uh, you can find us on YouTube and Rumble um, if we haven't been kicked off YouTube for any reason <laughs> and uh, see you all next week bye bye let me stop recording